Throughout the brilliant history of Chinese paintings, there have been some splendid landscape scrolls that have stood out above the rest. Some instances are Riverside Scene at the Qingming Festival by Zhang Zeduan of the Northern Song Dynasty, the Great Yangtze Map by Xia Gui of the Southern Song Dynasty, the Dwelling in the Fuchu Mountains by Huang Gongwan of the Yuan Dynasty, and Yangtze Ten Thousand Miles Map by Chang Da Chen, a modern painter. Most of these masterpieces feature the mountains and the rivers found in the lower reaches of the Yangtze River. Yet paintings depicting the scenery alongside the Yellow River are fairly rare. Amazingly, at the start of the 1990s, a painting called Ten Thousand Miles of Scenery Alongside the Yellow River made a public appearance in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. On the way on the other side of the Pacific Ocean from China, everyone who had the good fortune to see it marveled at the brilliance displayed in the painting. Regarded as an epic, the painting was believed to represent the highest level of Chinese scroll painting in the 1980s. However, after this public appearance, the painting disappeared from public sight. Was it locked away in a secret place by some private collector, or perhaps destroyed due to the change of hands? Whatever the reason, whether it resides hidden in the Chinese homeland where the Yellow River runs, or somewhere in Trans-Pacific North America, it was thought that nobody would ever see the painting again. It was not until the spring of 2013, after a long period of silence, that a piece of news broke out once again from across the Pacific Ocean. Ten thousand miles of scenery alongside the Yellow River had come back. Standing elegantly in front of all the viewers, the painting not only showed the tremendous visual momentum of the Yellow River before people's eyes, but also told a touching story of the painter himself. Ten thousand miles of scenery alongside the Yellow River is an ink on paper hand scroll with dimensions of 0.6 by 158 meters, which vividly depicts the landscapes, cultural relics, and people's livelihoods alongside the banks of the Yellow River. From the painting, people can get a bird's eye view of the Yellow River, which originates in the Ba Yan Ha Mountain and flows through nine provinces, seven large dams and hydroelectric power stations, as well as flood management projects along the way until it finally empties into the Bohai Sea. The whole painting is like a rousing symphony, featuring strong dynamics, steady tempo, and a perfect pitch. Some passages are sweeping and powerful, while others are soft and smooth. Different passages are well arranged and interconnected, each having a role to play. The painting is recognized as the world's longest Chinese ink and a wash hand scroll depicting the Yellow River. In the initial part of the painting stand the snow-capped Bayan Ha Mountains. At the foot of the mountains, wild deer leap about in the meadow, which bring a flourish of natural vitality to the static scene. In this part, the shading of the mountains is achieved by light inking. The deer are delineated differently from each other with sharp and bold strokes. The painting is depicted in such a delicate manner that even the antlers of the deer are clearly visible. The foreground of the picture was stippled with turquoise and scarlet wildflowers, which adds a touch of color to the painting. Remnant snows melting to a mere trickle run slowly into the growing lake. Alongside the lake, a group of wild yaks are seen migrating. Above the lake, a flock of birds are hovering over the cloudy, vaporous mist. Both the movement and stillness embodied in the painting give the source of the Yellow River an aura of cosmic calmness. 
then, the Longyang Gorge, featuring large stretches of green, comes into view. Seen from a technical point of view, the shapes of the mountains and stones are expressed with bold strokes. With the lighting and shading achieved by moist brush strokes, the painting shows fine dynamics of tonality. The Yellow River flows gently into the Luas Plateau, meandering through the Yangguo Gorges and the White Pagoda Mountain, Maiji Mountain, Yingchuan, and Baotou. Along the way, people are met by imposing verdure-covered mountains, knots of trees. And the calm lakes rippling and sparkling in the sunlight, the eternal motion of nature, seen in the dichotomies of summer and winter, dawn and twilight, light and shadow, must have fascinated the painter so much that he recorded them in the work with his brush. In the middle portion of the hand scroll. The Yellow River plunges over a narrow cliff opening, as if the water were pouring forth from a huge teapot. It is the Huko Waterfall. The tremendous mass of water strikes the rocks, creating oceans of foam and a thunderous roar. Different shapes of stones are depicted with sharp, thick lines, which gives the rocks a sense of resilience. Pine trees are drawn with bow strokes, giving the scene a grand air. This part of the painting features the Sanmen Gorge Dam, also known as the Greatest Dam of the Yellow River. It portrays an occasion in which people are busy building the dam, reflecting a new landscape of the river for the 20th century. The dam is very detailed and delicately drawn. Such a degree of technical and professional proficiency cannot be achieved without repeated practice and acute observation. Pour more or splash ink painting gives full expression to the delicacy and beauty of a landscape. The use of the side brush technique, together with the dry wrinkling method, are often employed in depictions of detail. Winding its way between the mountains, the Yellow River continues surging forward with great momentum. The lines for the river are energetic and flexible. Showing a stark contrast with those of the mountains and the stones, which are heavier and dark. The ceaselessly flowing Yellow River stretches 5,000 miles, running through Mount Song, Mount Man, Huayuan Co, Mount Liang. And Mount Tai, and finally emptying into the Bohai Gulf. This turbulent river, which was depicted with a light ink, gallops like a proud steed. It seems that nothing can prevent it from pouring into the sea. Viewing from the beginning to the end of the hand scroll, viewers not only get a taste of Oriental aesthetics, but also gain a deeper understanding of ink and wash painting. With each stroke of the brush, the painter successfully depicted the mysterious mist, majestic mountains, and the turbulent river. The quiet and peaceful atmosphere along the Yellow River, the winding path. Through the soaring peaks, as well as the river's long history, are fully realized in the painting. The seal inscribed on the painting reads, "Huang Ding, the Old Man." 
It turns out that the painter is none other than Mr. Zhou Zhongfu, the famous modern Chinese artist. What kind of person is he? How did he manage to complete such a stunning work? Zhou Zhongfu was born in 1911 in Shou County, Henan Province. Growing up in an artistic family, he nurtured an inclination for the fine arts since childhood. When he was a child, he used to sketch the surging waves on the shore of the Yellow River with nothing but a branch. Perhaps since then, an idea began to take root in his mind that he should spend his whole life depicting the Yellow River. Attracted by Mr. Liu Hai Su's reputation, he applied to study at the Shanghai Art College, already distinguished with honors from his graduation from high school in 1929. Since then, he became Mr. Liu's devoted disciple and forged a close relationship with him in the following decades. In 1933, Zhou returned to his hometown in Henan after finishing his degree. Under the support of Mr. Liu Hai Su, he founded the Zhongyuan Art Normal University in Kaifeng, where a large number of new artistic talents were trained and cultivated. After the founding of New China, Zhou Zhongfu's fate became more closely linked with the Yellow River. He served as the chief art editor in charge of painting and publicity for a magazine named Yellow River Construction. His affection for Yellow River drove him to begin the creation of the masterpiece. Starting from the early 1950s, he began to collect relevant materials. He visited Lanzhou, Xi'an, Tianshui, Taiwan, Zhengzhou, and other places, recording the beautiful scenery as well as the local customs and culture alongside the Yellow River with his paintbrush. He trekked alongside the Yellow River, and during the journey, he watched the people build the dam. While he enjoyed the spectacular views of cascading terraces and tranquil lakes, he kept what he saw and what he thought about by sketching, drawing, and painting, altogether accumulating tens of thousands of source materials. During the Cultural Revolution. When many intellectuals were persecuted, and everything was thrown into chaos, he had no choice but to delay his plan and suspend his creation. During the day, he could not draw, but while deep in the night, he vented all his pent-up passions by conceiving and germinating the painting in his mind. Finally, he greeted the dawn. By that time, he was near the retirement age, but he stood firm in his unwavering determination to finish 10,000 miles scenery alongside the Yellow River. He once again set out on the materials-gathering journey. This time, he plunged deeper into the thick of life alongside the Yellow River and observed things more carefully, trying to take in all the details he could. He left his footprints in every nook and cranny, ranging from the western bank of the Yellow River to the eastern coast estuary. Eventually, he fell ill from his constant overwork. However, once he saw the rows of footprints left by the boat trackers and the great accomplishments in harnessing the Yellow River achieved by the local people, his passion was ignited again. The Yellow River, known as China's Mother River, the cradle of early Chinese civilization, has nurtured countless generations of people, who in turn safeguarded and developed the Yellow River with their diligence and their resilience. These people made a fabulous personal contributions to this magical land. Zhou Zhongfu is the one who must be crowned with glory and honor. His matchless work. Which embodied his lifelong painstaking effort and long cherished the wish, astounded the world. 
After 30 years of accumulating materials and preparation, and more than five years of around-the-clock creative efforts, he finally completed the legendary work, 10,000 miles scenery alongside the Yellow River, by the end of 1984, at the age of 73. Shortly after that, he passed away. Today, while people appreciate the sublime beauty of his painting, they cannot help but lament the painter's death and shed tears for his lifelong toil and pursuit. Such celebrities, including Chinese famous painter Lo Shibai. Famous poet Zhang Kejia, Sun Jingshan, famous calligrapher Chen Tianran inscribed poems or verses on the scroll. Joe's mentor, the famous modern Chinese painter Mr. Liu Hai Su, wept bitter tears over the loss of his favorite student, and wrote a five-chapter inscription, Zhou Zhongfu's exhibition, to him. Zhou's old friend, the famous Chinese writer Yao Shuying, composed a poem for him. Gazing at the vast and boundless sea, a man with graying locks recalled his old days. He who was wrapped up in the painting and spent his whole life depicting the Yellow River deserves everyone's respect. Mr. Jiang Zhaohe, the Chinese guru of contemporary figure painting in the 20th century, wrote in his inscription: "In Zhou's painting, the Yellow River gets a new look, which reflects the great rejuvenation of China and promotes our national spirit. It is beyond all doubt a masterpiece." Today, the work which wore out all the painter's energy. Has come back into people's view after years of disappearance. In the near future, more people will have the chance to enjoy the wonderful painting, and to be touched by the painter's strong will, sophisticated skills, and deep love for his motherland. The Yellow River, the cradle of early Chinese civilization, has had different manifestations throughout the eras. Since the completion of 10,000 miles scenery alongside the Yellow River, the natural landscape along the Yellow River has undergone a few changes, making it slightly different from the scene captured by Zhou in his painting from the previous century. However, he left the contemporary people, and more importantly. The future generation, with an extremely valuable and unique cultural heritage. The preciousness of the painting not only lies in its artistic value in Chinese art and in painting history, but also in its historical and cultural value. As the painter himself wrote at the end of the scroll, this painting encapsulates my whole life, and I want to dedicate it to my motherland.